Hello friends, it's Christy Marcotte. I'm guest designing for Pretty Pink Posh this month using their brand new September 2022 release and it's all about fall. There are lots of new stamps, dyes, stencils, and also some beautiful new pearl colors. I have a few cards to share with you today, starting with their brand new layered apple stencil set. There are three stencils for the set. One has the main body of the apple, there's also a layer for the leaves and the stem. I'm starting off with the main body of the apple. I have a mini stencil mat from Waffle Flower and that helps hold my paper and my stencil in place. I'm using the rocking red ink color from Catherine Pooler and adding it all over the background. And I'm going for an ombre look with the darker color at the very top and gradually getting lighter toward the bottom of the paper. The apple design is perfect for some fall cards and also teacher appreciation cards. You can add a thank you sentiment, write a nice message on the inside, and this card is ready to go. Now I'll start working on the leaves and I'm doing that same ombre effect with the darker color at the top and gradually getting lighter toward the bottom. I'm using the grass skirt ink color from Catherine Pooler. And now I'll do the same thing for the stem. And I'm using the icing on the cake ink color from Catherine Pooler. I love this oval ink stand. It has grippies on the bottom so you don't have to hold onto your ink pad while you're doing your stenciling or ink blending. So once I have that background finished, I'll trim down that panel. So it's four inches by five and a quarter inches. Now I'll add a few stitch strip die cuts from Pretty Pink Posh. Cut out three different sizes in coordinating colors. I'll add the green down first, then the red right above, and the skinny little brown piece will go on top of the green toward the bottom. I'm just adhering these in place using some liquid adhesive. I'll just flip over my panel to trim off the extra. The stitch strips are an easy way to add some extra detail to your cards, and there are four different widths included on the set. I use the three smaller sizes. Then I'll layer this piece on some dark brown cardstock, and then again on some red cardstock. Put some ATG tape on the back and add my card front onto a card base. All of my cards in this video are American Standard A2 size, four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. For the cardstock layers, I add an additional eighth of an inch. So that brown cardstock layer is four and one eighth of an inch by five and three eighths of an inch. And the red cardstock layer is the full A2 size. Now I'll start working on the sentiment. I've already cut out this little frame from the Halloween Circle die set. And I stamped just a little note and this is from the new Mouse Friends stamp set. I stamped it in the lower right hand corner and I did use some shimmer cardstock for that sentiment piece. So I'm trying to be really careful not to touch the ink until I know it's dried completely. Before adhering this piece to the card, I will add some cardstock layers on the top and lower portion where it goes over those stitch strips. That way it stays nice and level. But I also decided to pop it up using some thin foam dimension. I'll make sure to get good coverage so there isn't one area that sags. And these are made by Honeybee Stamps. It's one of my favorite foam dimensions since it's nice and thin. Then I'll remove the release paper and adhere it in the lower left hand corner. One of the hardest things about creating beautiful backgrounds with stencils is covering up that design. So I try to make it fairly minimal with just the sentiment, a little image, and those stitch strips at the lower portion of the card. Next, I'll be adding a couple of apple die cuts, and these are from the new Fall Basket die set. And there are two different images of the apples. One has a little stitched highlight, and the other looks like an apple cut in half, since you can see the inside and the seeds. I also cut out the stems and the leaves, and I did pop up both of those leaves using some thin foam dimension. Then to finish off the card, I'm adding some sparkly clear jewels from Pretty Pink Posh. I'm using an embellishment wand to pick those up, adding just a small drop of liquid adhesive and pressing them in place. And I'll put three of them around the sentiment. And I do want to mention the jewels do not come in the little plastic container. I like to store my bling in these little containers. So there is my finished card and I did make two using this design. 
Now moving on to card design number two. I'll be using another stencil, this time the layered sunflowers, and there are four layers for this set. Two layers have the petals, one layer has the very center of the sunflower, and the final layer has the leaves. And this design is just beautiful. I love sunflowers. And it should be no surprise, but I'm making pink sunflowers. I do love the traditional yellow sunflowers, but there are quite a few varieties out there. I'm not sure I've ever seen some pretty pink like this, but that's what's fun about card making. You can use whatever colors you want. I selected two different pink ink colors from Catherine Pooler. The first one I used was pink champagne, and now I'm using sparkling berry, which is just a little bit darker than the pink champagne. And I have sped up the video quite a bit for the stenciling. Lifting up the stencil to reveal the finished result is always so fun. Look at those beautiful pink petals. Now it's time to work on the center of the flower. I'm using the icing on the cake ink color. And I'm trying to get a nice dark coverage with that pretty brown. If you've never used stencils before and are wondering how to clean them, I just rinse mine with clean water and the ink comes right off. Then I just pat it dry with a towel. For the leaves, I'll be using the minted ink color. It's a soft green ink color and I think it looks lovely with the pink and brown. The stencil size is six by six. My cardstock panel is an A2 size. So I do have that little extra along the top and the right hand side. But once I'm done stenciling, I'll trim down that panel to four inches by five and a quarter inches, just like I did with the apple card. So there is that beautiful stencil background. And again, it's really hard to cover up or even cut, but I did decide to use a scallop border die from Pretty Pink Posh to cut this fun wavy design. I'll be layering it on some dark brown cardstock. And at the bottom of the card, I'm using some pattern paper from Doodlebug Design. It's a pink tone-on-tone -tone polka dot pattern. Before adhering the sunflower panel down, I will put a scrap piece of cardstock above that pink pattern paper just to keep it nice and level. Then I'll put some ATG tape on the back of the sunflower panel and also some liquid adhesive along that scallop border just to help it lay flat. Then I'll layer this panel on some white shimmer cardstock. You'll only see eighth of an inch of it, but it does add that lovely shimmer look. Put some ATG tape on the back and add my card front onto a card base. Next, I'll stamp the sentiment directly onto the card, so I will be using my Mini Misty. And the sentiment I'm using is Sending You Sunshine, and this is from the new Potted Sunflower stamp set. This is a great sentiment, and I know I'll be using that quite a bit. The ink color I'm using is Icing on the Cake from Catherine Pooler. I did ink it up a couple times to get a nice solid impression. Then to finish off the card, I'm adding some pearls from Pretty Pink Posh. This is the espresso color. It's not part of the new release, but I thought the color matched perfectly with the colors on this card. I'll put two in the upper left-hand corner and three around the sentiment. And I'm using my embellishment wand to pick those up, adding just that small drop of liquid adhesive and pressing them in place. Then for a final finishing touch, I'm using a white gel pen and adding just a few little polka dots to all of the sunflowers. So there is my finished card and I did make two using this design. I love how this card turned out. It's a very simple card design, but I really didn't want to cover up the beautiful pink sunflowers. Now moving on to card design number three. I'm using some pattern paper from Doodlebug Design. The background I believe is from their Pumpkin Spice collection. It's just a piece of 12 by 12 I had on hand. And then I have some brown tone on tone polka dot paper for the very bottom. I'm adding a stitched strip die cut. And I did put some double sided tape on the back side to adhere it to my card. Just flip over that panel to trim off the extra. And I'll layer this piece on some dark brown cardstock. Then I'll add my card front onto a card base, leaving eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. So now I have the main background of my card all ready. I can start working on the die cuts from the new Fall Basket die set. This is such a fun set. Definitely one of my favorites from the new release. 
It includes the basket, there's pumpkins, leaves, some other fall foliage. There's also mushrooms, apples, acorns. I think there's a few other things included. It's the perfect set for making some fun fall cards. I'll start off by assembling the basket. I have the very front and it has the two wood pieces that go across the front. So I'll just glue all those down first. I'm putting some double-sided tape on the back of this basket and that'll make it easier to fill it up. So remove all the release paper. And I'll start by adding the pumpkins. And this basket will have three pumpkins. And I almost forgot to add the stem to a couple of the pumpkins. The one at the bottom won't be visible, but the two at the top will be. So I made sure to glue that piece on. I'm lightly adding the pieces until I know I have the placement correct. So sometimes I decide to add a little leaf in front of the pumpkin instead of behind the pumpkin. I'll add some of the foliage behind the pumpkin on the left side. Put some more double-sided tape on the back just to make sure everything is staying in place. This part is so much fun, just adding more and more items inside the basket. And I love the pop of teal. There's a little bit of teal on the pattern paper in the background, so I really wanted to bring in some teal for some of the foliage pieces. Once I have that basket all filled, I'll put some liquid adhesive on the back and attach it to the back piece of the basket. I have a couple more fall foliage pieces that I'll tuck into the front of the basket. I'll add a little bit of liquid adhesive to the top of those two pieces so they aren't sticking out. And I will be popping this up using some foam dimension. I have the thin foam strips from Honeybee Stamps. Remove the release paper and adhere the basket in the lower left-hand corner. And I'll have the bottom of the basket going all the way to the bottom of the card. Also add just a little bit of liquid adhesive behind some of those loose fall foliage pieces. For the sentiment on the card, I'll be adding the word grateful. And this is one of the new dies from Pretty Pink Posh. I cut out two pieces, one in yellow cardstock and the other in brown cardstock and I glued those two pieces together, just offsetting it slightly so you can see a peak of the yellow cardstock from behind. And that'll help it pop against that plaid pattern paper on the background. I'll set that aside so I can stamp out the rest of the sentiment. I'm using the Simple Sentiment set from Pretty Pink Posh. This is an older set, but it's one of my favorites. I'm using the sentiment, Grateful For You, but I am masking off the word grateful, so I'm only stamping out for you. I stamped it on some light brown cardstock, just trim that down, and I'm adding the sentiment underneath the word grateful. Then to finish off the card, I'll use the new Sunset Orange Pearls from Pretty Pink Posh. It's a very bright color, but it does have an iridescent finish on it, and it works beautifully with the colors on this card. I'll add three of them around the sentiment, I'll put two in the lower left-hand corner, one on the left side of the basket, and the final pearl will go on one of the pumpkins. So there is my finished card, and I did make two using this design. I love how this card turned out as well. Beautiful fall colors, and the fall basket die set is so much fun. Now here's another look at the six cards I made using Pretty Pink Posh's brand new September 2022 release. It's all about fall and there are so many fun new products. If you are interested in any of the products I used in this video, I do have links provided in the description box below. I've been having so much fun guest designing for Pretty Pink Posh this month. They are a local company to me located here in Washington State, and I love that their stamps, stencils, and dies are all made in the U.S. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.